Good evening. This is Tuesday. It's live at five here at the Open Door West Point Church here with Julius Kirsten. And I'll be sharing with you today a little bit about from the message of Sunday. I'm going to be unpacking parts of it. Yesterday we spoke about how good and how pleasing it is from Psalm 133 when brethren dwell together in unity and what that constitutes. Now Tuesday. Now we're talking a little bit about the church of Jesus Christ and what divides us in the church and why we have these divisions, but also the very, very thing that will unite you today with other people that belong to the body of Christ. Now, we can't be united just because we're in one building together. We cannot be united and say we're in, in unity just because we come together under a name of a church. We cannot be united by our bumper stickers. Hey, those things that say, I love being a Methodist, I love being an Anglican, I love being a Presbyterian, I love being a Pentecostal, I love being these different things. Those things in essence actually bring division. We know that denominationality or denominations are not in heaven. It's not of God. Man decided this because we have different approaches or I should say different applications of the word of God. And there are doctrinal differences in some areas. And so we have all these divisions in the church. Now I want to, I want to, I want to suggest to you today, and I wrote this little quote down. It's my own. It says, the church of Jesus Christ is divided because of dead religious systems geared towards building man's own kingdom. I want to say to you again, the church of Jesus Christ is divided because of dead religious systems geared towards building man's own kingdom. Mm. Now remember our topic is what? Who are you glued to? That's still our main theme that we are sticking to. Who are you glued to? Now the church of Jesus Christ is divided because of dead religious systems geared towards building man's own kingdom. That's why I said last night, I spoke about um, that we can follow that mission statement and that vision of a church and a, and a personality or a person that leads the church more than we follow the head of the church, Jesus Christ. More than we are dedicated to the mission of Christ, we can be dedicated to a man's vision or a woman's vision. And God wants us to come back simply to the word and say, are we united through this? Listen to the, this passage of scripture and then I want to read this to you out of Romans chapter 6. This is what really unites us when we can come to this place. Romans chapter 6 verse 6 to 8 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Verse 7, Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if he died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. <sighs> Beautiful scripture. It starts off by telling us here that we know that our old self was crucified with him. That's where you have to come to first, is to the cross. But you cannot come just to before the cross, you have to go through the cross. In other words, you have to die to self, you have to die to sin with Christ. As you come to the cross, you are no longer a slave to sin anymore because you've died to it. You have accepted what Christ did for you on the cross. He died for your sins, paid the price. His blood washes you now. You accept by faith what Jesus has done for you. That means a death to the old man. Old Julius is dead. He's gone. He's no longer here. This is new Julius standing before you. Old Julius was connected to his flesh. All, well, entrenched in his flesh. Entrenched towards sin. And actually focused on sin. New Julius is the one that now becomes which is resurrected with Christ to a new life in Jesus, which now means I am now towards righteousness, a right standing with God through the blood of Jesus, through the relationship that I maintain with Jesus. This is what will unite us more than anything else. If you have died to your own desires, your own fleshly desires and the sin that that brings with it, and you are made alive by going through the cross to the resurrection and being alive with Christ, seated with him in heavenly places. Now you, you function in the resurrection power. Your focus is now the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you are now living in righteousness before God. Sin is not counted against you anymore. You're living a new life. This unites us in the church because now we are alive to righteousness and dead to sin. You see... 
That is where my own pleasures and my own desires take a back seat compared to God's demands, God's will, God's word, God, prayer, and worship. And this is where we need to encourage one another in the church is to continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. Pastor George, you shared an amazing message yesterday morning on worship. Worship in spirit and in truth is God number one. And you and I must encourage one another to continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. When we say, when last have you testified to someone? When last have you shared your testimony? When last have you led someone to Jesus Christ? When last have you taken your phone and, and send a message to that family member that needs encouragement? When last have you encouraged someone to come to church with you or, or watch online? Or just, just an encouragement to say, I'm thinking of you, I love you, whatever it is. So that person can be drawn ultimately to Christ. When last have you done this? When last have you shared what Christ has done for you? I want to encourage you today, do it. Post it on your social media. Get it out there. Now, I... Um, Talking about this and what brings us together, uh, I read Psalm 133 yesterday. Psalm 133 verse 2 says this, It is like, now it said first of all, how good and how pleasant it is in verse 1, when brethren dwell together in unity. But verse 2 goes into, It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. I love this because here it says to us, this unity that is good and pleasing when, when we come together in unity, brethren and sisterin, <laughs> eh? when we get there together, it's like the oil that pours down the beard of Aaron. Now, I don't know if Aaron had much hair. He must have been bald there because that, that oil must be running quickly down the beard, then into the garments, onto the hem of his garments. That precious oil is anointed. Now, anointed as what? A priest to serve the people. He has to serve before God in the temple. And a priest towards the people representing God. And then it says like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains. But think about this oil running down. That brings me to a New Testament picture where Jesus comes out of the waters of baptism. And it's like that water runs down him. It's like the anointing that runs down on Aaron. It's like Jesus is anointed now. He's set apart now for ministry. He starts his ministry after his baptism in the New Testament. He first goes to the desert, we know, to the wilderness to be tested. And out of that place, he comes into his ministry, ministering physically to people and about the kingdom of God. And he begins to minister to people around him. And this is what happens here in the church. When Jesus is the head and he's revered and he's focused upon and he, his name is made famous and we are all together because of Jesus and for him. And so we can worship him. There's an anointing that comes upon the church. The church is now together in unity, unified by Christ. It's like that oil. It's like, it's like Jesus uh, coming up of that waters. It's like it flows down and, it's an, and there's an anointing that flows through the church. And I believe more miracles, more signs, more wonders will break out when we come back to the reality and to the focus of Christ himself, the person Jesus, the, the Lord and Savior of my life, then salvation flows from Jesus, healing flows from Jesus, deliverance flows from Jesus, and his body is blessed through this. We are the body. We call the body of Christ. We, the body, are blessed through this. This is what unites us. This is what glues you to Christ and to others around you now that it flows down into the, the, the body from the head Jesus. Here's a statement that, that A.W. Tozer made. And we know A.W. Tozer. Yes, he, he has passed on, but he's still alive on YouTube. <laughs> you can go check out his stuff. He talks about prayer much. Now he's made the statement. He said, 100 religious persons knit into a unity by careful organizations do not constitute a church any more than 11 dead men make a football team. <laughs> wow. The first requisite is life always. 100 religious persons knit together by or into a unity by careful organizations do not constitute a church any more than 11 dead men make up a football team. Think about that. That football team is useless. That football team cannot operate because the men 
are dead. And that's the same way organization, dead systems, dead religious systems cannot unite us and make us alive in Christ. We have to first die to self and live for Christ. And here in this passage of scripture, it speaks about that anointing that needs to flow when Christ is, is put in the center of what we do. And here he says that the first requisite is life. And that's where you live in the resurrected life of Christ. And you live from that place. And that is where the church comes together, like Romans 6 said there to us. And this is where the church begins to function in the power and the anointing anointing of Christ, the anointed one. It's not our anointing. It's not us bringing salvation. It's not us bringing healing. It's not us bringing deliverance, but it is Christ because he is the anointed one that anoints the church. Amen. And anoints the church, which means you and me. Well, that comes us, brings us to the end of today's talk. And let us do that together. Let us come together because of the life that we have in Christ. Have you died to self? Have you done what Christ has, has required of you to to, to die to your will so that his will can be done. Just like we pray in the Lord's Prayer every night here together. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Remember, pray for those in your families. Pray for the church. Let's continue to pray for rain. Let's continue to trust God for our breakthroughs that we're trusting him for. But let us worship him foremost and firstly in everything we do. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you as you continue to pray with one another online. We are signing off for tonight.